Hey guys, welcome back to another top five video. Hopefully these aren't going to shock you too much. I'm not going to waste any time with the disclaimer. Let's just get right into it. So a little bit of a bait and switch here. We're going to be starting with Odin. Now I used Amon because God, that artwork is great. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But this has got to be the most, one of, if not the most played summons to date. It's been good since Opus 1. It's going to continue to be good. And this is a card, if you haven't picked it up foil and you're hunting foils, probably should pick it up now. If I Final Fantasy did this interesting reprints in the earlier sets and didn't reprint too much stuff and this is kind of one of those cards where i could see if they keep it out maybe they're going to reprint it they introduced them in starter decks or entry decks is what they call them in the chapter series so maybe we'll receive this in some form but i expect that foils are going to be extremely limited four drop odin breaks a very simple very clean breaks a cause four or less forward done deal that's all you need it to do it's going to keep seeing play, and again, it's got to be one of the best best and most used cards for Lightning. Moving on, and kind of spoiled by the thumbnails, we have Amon. Now, this is going to be probably the uh, most controversial pick that I have here. And, okay, one, again, just the artwork is great, but it is a 4-drop AK. It's fine for stats, and the effect lets you enter the field, dull something, hopefully get in a point of damage. But I, I really want to focus on the Red Mage backup that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. The fact that he can also dull something. There are going to be countless games, or there has been countless games, that I've been able to play this, give it haste, either just swing for another point of damage, or just dull something and get that last point of damage we needed, especially if, like, if they have a Prish or some other problematic forward. He's just a good, efficient, clean body for what he does. Now, again, it's not going to be the flashiest effect. It's not going to be the most crazy end of the battlefield it's just clean, simple, good cards that can get it done at the end of the day. And I think that Amon was worth mentioning over some of the other cards just for that simple fact. He hasn't been seeing a lot of play lately, but if Shiva, for a lower cost, uh, all things considered, is going to be considered one of the best ice cards that dulls two forwards, I definitely think Amon, yes, he does take a little bit more work, is worth mentioning as well. Moving on, we have Al Cid, and I don't want to waste a lot of time on this card. It's great. Great for the effect. Obviously, you have to play either Rigi or Onion Knight, so those are kind of our also honorable mentions because of Al Cid, and they get their own mention anyways. This entire package has been played since Opus 2. I don't expect it going anywhere for Opus th uh, 5. It's been played in Opus 3 where we got some new targets with, with the Black Waltz. Uh, Opus 4, we got to see the Archangel. Uh, I think Archangel EV is the full name, whatever the full name of the card is. There are a ton of three drops that we've gained in Lightning that have been additional Al Cid targets. And kind of the same reason for Golbez or some of the other forwards. They just get better and better as more cards that qual that hit that qualification are printed. So Al Cid is here to stay. It's a cheap, effective forward for what it does, all things considered. You get to bring another body and kill something. It, it does everything that Lightning wants to do. Moving on to our backup of choice, we have Red Mage. And this one doesn't need a lot of introduction. You've probably been playing this one since Opus 1, or I've seen it played. Two drop easy simple effect and you can give any forward haste i mean that does everything that you wanted to be doing in it as well because it changes the dynamic of how the game is going to be played for your opponent's perspective at any point you can threaten a haste forward and considering that in most cases you're going to be able to get to four backups fairly easy you can use two of them to help pay the cost of four and the other two one of them being red mage and one other lightning backup to give it haste so at any point that you're at four backups with this in play your opponent is going to be thinking about how they have to approach the game differently how good this card is can really be understood if you ever played the mono lightning mirror or just some of the other matchups where having haste is going to be effective and you want some of those on hit effects like say genesis or lock to force your opponent to discard or other effects or if you're being really spicy you could play Orin from set one but that's not so flashy or great not seeing a lot of play now i hate using this term uh but it is strictly better than the summon Fire Summon by comparison. I Raiden is everything that you want in a high cost summon because it's going to break one regardless of the power that it has and completely remove from the game the other. No more annoying Renault effects. Get rid of that gold bez. It does everything that you would expect and hope a nine cost summon to do. Now, again, this is kind of one of those cards you're only going to be playing maybe a one, maybe a two of in a lot of cases, unless you're playing some weird shadow deck. Um, but for what it does, you're very happy with the effect and it's probably going to win you the game on the spot. Being able to remove two forwards at any point is going to be very strong for you. And yes, it is 
very expensive, but as we said way back in the days of Opus One with Bahamut, the comparison, the obvious comparison here, if you're removing two things, it should be winning you the game, and if not, you're probably getting in enough points where you can win the game on the next turn. Now, it is very important to note that it doesn't have that 10k restriction, so again, it can break anything. So keep in mind that it also helps get around things like Cecil when it says you guys can't be damaged by summons, all those other effects. It is, it is strictly better in every single way. Then we're going to be moving on to our honorable mention. So of course, we're going to be starting off with Freya. No, I'm sorry, just kidding. We're going to talk about some really honorable mentions now. That one was just for Okimoto. So we have Seymour, we have Lulu, we have Ida, we have Odin, we have the five drop lighting. There is a ton of honorable mentions that I would like to at least acknowledge, throw out there. Seymour breaks backups. Lulu has Thundaga and pretty much enable the entire wind lightning strategy if you went that route. Edia obviously being insanely good in mono lightning, but she's very limited in that regard. Seven cost Odin. E EX burst breaks anything. Yes, it's expensive. And then lightning. I really do like the new lightning. I think she's going to be seeing a lot more play in the next set because Final Fantasy 13 is getting some key cards. We're going to see more about that in future video sets, what have you. But I think all of these are absolutely worth mentioning. The last card that gets honorable mention is Golbez for me. This is the card that in the same vein as Al Cid, that as they keep printing three drops or less for Al Cid or cost two for Golbez, uh, well, that one of any element, it's just going to get more and more support with future sets. So Square Enix has to be very careful at what two cost forwards that they print going forward. And again, anytime that you have a 9,000 power, so again, the power checks out, so it's really great to play early for that. But anytime you have a six drop that you're spending a lot of resources into that says, okay, I'm going to break it and get four more attackers. And keep in mind, what, what, we have three haste, two drops now. We have the Onion Knight in Light, we have the Hasty Guy in Lightning, and then the Haste one, uh, Tifa, for Fire. So there's going to be some turns where you can swing for Golbez, get in a point of damage, break your own card, get in three more points of damage. Yes, that's Magical Christmas Land, but we at least have to acknowledge it for the, what it is, that I think Golbez is going to be one of those cards we just have to keep in the back of our mind. Now, yes, Heroic Yuna is being played a ton right now, so you have to rely on the Strongest Sword half of the deck at that point, but... It's worth noting that both those can go in the same deck. Golbez is still going to give you that plan A or plan B, depending on your local meta, the matchup, what have you. And it's good enough where I think it's going to be. Uh, I would not be surprised if we see some people playing a Golbez-based deck in the upcoming regionals. So that is the top five lightning cards with a ton of honorable mentions. Let me know what you guys think. Did I hit all the top five? Is Amon really just that trash of a pick? Let me know what your top five cards are in the comments below. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. That helps us out a ton with getting the Final Fantasy word out there. And of course, look forward to our next top five video coming out next week. We're going to be wrapping up with water. And then we're going to get back to doing our deck spotlights and all that other great stuff and talking about regionals very, very soon. So on behalf of myself and the rest of the Six Ages Gaming crew, thank you so much for watching, guys. And we'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one. This video made possible thanks to our Patreon supporters. Thank you to our honorary sages.